All right. Let's get started. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Okay. So I am excited to get started on this uh, on this piece today. Um, <clears throat> I've wanted to, to work on this character since I first saw the uh, design. Hey, everybody. Um, I've wanted to work on this character since uh, since Mikkel had gone through and first designed it. Uh, I think it was back like for Day of the Dead, around Day of the Dead last year. Um, it's such a beautiful piece. So such cool shape and design in it. And I, I just, I, I can't wait to get started on this. So this is, this is what I'll be, uh, what I'll be focusing on for today. Um, I'm hoping to at least get kind of a good bust going, uh, for today. And then, you know, maybe I'll be able to go through and kind of play with the rest of the design at some other point. Um, I want to I want to get rid of the white background and I want to get rid of these stripes here on the side or at least on this side just so that it's you know a little bit less crowded and I can kind of keep this uh, image on my spotlight and have it work well for me so I'm just gonna do that real quick um, let's go ahead let's grab this paint control alt click and drag control alt, click and drag ah. There we go. There we go. There we go. I'm trying to be careful not to get rid of too much. Because if I do, then I'll be missing things like that. <laughs> oh, okay. I was worried for a second there. I thought it was going to eliminate something I wanted to keep. Okay, come on you. Come on you. I know you want to work. Yeah, we'll just leave that. It's not going to be a big deal and that'll be out of the way anyway. So let's go ahead. I'm going to resize it, reposition it, and put it maybe about right there. So that in case I need to open up uh, different brushes, I can go ahead and open that and then it's not going to you know, um, it's not going to get in the way, you know, timeline, brushes, things like that. Oh. I'm starting to get the hang of ZBrush Core. I think the hardest part has been getting used to the UI. Yeah, getting uh, getting into ZBrush for the first time, for sure. Uh, for sure. Alright, let's go ahead and drag this on. Hit edit. Alright, so now we start. <laughs> Piche. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> well, you know, I'm just I'm just kinda hanging, hanging, hanging. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to start off. Let's get this get this party started. So I'm going to start off with a couple little tricks just for the sake of being able to get some quick shape in here okay something like this right now I'm not worried about topology at all I'm not worried about really much of anything I'm just trying to get um, some simple oh shoot I gotta go up here to brush samples turn off spotlight projection now we're working now we're in business okay let's go in here and let's start playing around with this <clears throat> um, i'm going to be really like super digging at this so we'll see like a huge amount of change over the course of the stream i'm sure um let's go ahead and kind of dig at this face I want something like this for right now. It's always kind of fun going through and starting off a new project because it's like you come at it with all the energy and then if you use all that energy as quickly as possible right at the beginning, uh, it becomes, uh, you're, able, you're able to kind of take advantage of like the fresh ideas and uh, <clears throat> all that. 
that stuff. Figured I'd mute myself while I cough. That way I don't have to worry about breaking your eardrums. Uh, how is Netflix going? Netflix is awesome. I am super loving it. Um, yeah, best job, best job I've had. So this is it's it's been a it's been an absolute blast. Right now I'm working on developing a bunch of um, some kind of 3D development for for characters. Um, on the Roll Doll franchise, so um, you know, I've also done a bunch of environment development and stuff like that, and it's it's been it's been a wild ride. It's been super cool. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm gonna go through. Let's let's play with this. Um, let's get Dynamesh on. Okay, that'll be a good density for right now. It's kind of, I really want to play with planes of the face on this character. Um, so we're going to kind of be pushing and pulling on things quite a bit, but should be a lot of fun. Okay. Let me see. Well, how's everybody else doing this morning? <laughs> I've already been up for a couple hours. Already got a couple hours uh, of work in uh, for Netflix, so <laughs> I'm warmed up. Hola, Emilio. Todo va bien? Pues por acá. <clears throat> y para vos, ¿qué tal? Too hot here already. Where are you, where are you at, Alex? Right now, actually, <clears throat> in Los Angeles, we have a lot of. Uh, I think it's it's really overcast today, so it's it's pretty nice. <laughs> I'm super uh, super pleased. Malaga, that's right. España. Yeah, those are those are areas, those are places I'd love to visit someday. Okay, let me see, something like that. Now the eyes, the eyes themselves. <clears throat> oh, so right now, uh the brushes that I'm using the most are things like the trim dynamic, uh which has been great. Um, I'll use the Damien standard to kind of like sketch in these little creases and things like that. Uh, and then I'll just kind of smooth things out and then I'll use like the move, pardon me, the move brush to, um, to kind of push and pull things. Okay. Yeah. So far, so far I'm just keeping it like super, super simple. And then I'll use like, uh, my custom IMM primitives brush. Because uh, I don't like the default one, and so I, I like to use my own. I'll go in here and I'll just kind of start using this to block in my nose or other other pieces too. So you know, let's go ahead and we'll block that in. There's the bottom of the nose. We're just gonna say accept. Okay, so it looks kind of kind of goofy right now, but oh, shoot, let's use that move brush and kind of play with it, push it and pull it. So we can take, you know, we can take these sides and kind of pull them up a little bit, maybe pinch them in some. Take that. 
There we go. So now we're starting to get like a little bit more of that nose sort of shape. It's all about kind of knowing just basic shapes and pushing and pulling them together. <clears throat> For now, we'll call that all right. With Dynamesh, we want to make sure Groups is on so that when I go ahead and Dynamesh this, it's going to keep those pieces separate for now. It's kind of nice. <laughs> Hola, que onda, que paso, que tal? <laughs> um, voy bien por mi parte. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see. Todo puro bien. Okay, I'm going to try to take this. And I want to try to uh, use this, this mask to be able to create kind of that indentation for the eyes. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to grab this. Uh, let's, let's grab it right there, maybe. Okay, and then I'll just kind of smooth it out here at the top. Kind of smooth it out here at the bottom. It's kind of getting a better impression on that, uh, on the bridge of the nose and things like that. And kind of smooth out the edge a little just to kind of treat our edges a little better let's get it maybe a little bit more uh... she's got this really kind of interesting eye shape where it's like it's not straight across it's not angled down like this <clears throat> it feels kind of droopy and so what we want to do to be able to kind of imitate that help her to feel dead and help her to feel <laughs> droopy <laughs> kind of droopy tired, we're going to kind of angle the eyes downward like this. <clears throat> Turn the microphone back on. Okay. Let's see, let's play with that. Forms are getting kind of wonky, so we want to we want to make sure that we're watching it from different angles just to make sure that we're getting the shapes that we want out of it. And uh so far so good. Let me see. All right. Let's add in a neck and then we'll go ahead and we'll add in eyes. Cuz it'll be it'll be important to have those eyes in there so that we can know how to how to treat the forms around it. Okay, let's kind of get something like this going on. Pull it up and in a little bit. And then, oh, there's a lot going on with this that I, I kind of want to kind of want to figure out. There's too much jaw, so I got to take out some of that jaw. Okay, this is a very fluid process. This isn't something that's like you know once you're once you've done it once, you know you're you don't have to you don't have to go back to keep tweaking it. It's like this is something that you got to go through and you know keep tweaking. <laughs> <clears throat> let's see let's grab this part of the face and just to kind of start pulling it back some get a little bit more of that uh, foundation in there I think that I'm, I'm going through this these cheekbones are definitely stronger than I think I want them and this is a draw this in your style so I mean I, I can have some some free range on this but I'm kind of torn I almost want to go through and just make the design because such a cool design and I yeah let's I don't know let's 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 go more that direction 
because as a modeler, <clears throat> as a as a sculptor, uh, you want to make the design. Um, as a concept sculptor, though, there are a lot of you know. For instance, uh, in my job, a lot of what I do has to do with me kind of giving it my own final touch so it's so I'll probably go through and, and kind of treat this more or less how I how I do things for work so we'll have to see kind of how it uh How it goes. Let's get the eyes blocked in because that'll be helpful. <laughs> Thanks, Ivan. Or Ivan. I'm not sure how how you how you pronounce it. If you're a if you're a Spanish speaker, I guess it would be Ivan. But if it's uh if if you're uh, if you're an English speaker, it's probably uh, Ivan. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Let's go ahead and save this, and it's already going into the. Uh, it's going into the right folder there, so that's good. The uh, the head, the back of the head, right here. Let's actually use our clip curve. Oops. Just kind of sculpt this down so that it's kind of more of a rounded back of the head sort of sort of shape. It doesn't need to be as deep as like a like a traditional natural skull would be. This section I want to kind of cut into that a little bit. Pull that back some. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. Starting to like that a little bit better. <clears throat> Gotta really play with and, and and refine kind of some of these forms in here. Uh, you'll notice that I'm keeping everything very low resolution. Uh, that makes it so much easier to make sure that it's uh, that it's going to look pretty good, you know, that it's going to look right. One of the things I can do is I can bring it up here and I can kind of compare shapes and sizes and I'm definitely not getting the right shapes. Let's go ahead and kind of play with that some. Maybe pull out those cheekbones just a little bit. Something kind of like that is starting to work for me, I think. And we'll come back to it again later, I'm sure. Because <laughs> that's how this game goes. <laughs> and it's the fun thing, right? I mean, it's, it, it, since it is a, um, a draw this in your style, you can always just use that as an excuse to say, oh, it doesn't look exactly like the concept. <laughs> Thank heavens I got to use the uh, draw. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, the, the idea for me... is to go through and really kind of tweak this to, to feel a good deal like the uh, the concept. Um, and granted, this is going to be more of a speed sculpt than anything, so it's going to probably not be perfect. But we're gonna do our dondest. <laughs> Let's 
go ahead and mask the top and the bottom. We'll just kind of smooth this out so that it gets me a little bit of a taper toward the middle. Okay, let's block those eyes in. And what I'm gonna do, I, I went ahead and duplicated that. I'm just gonna go ahead and call this head. This way I have kind of a, a base thing to come back to and then I've got like an actual piece that I can work on. Okay, so let's see, let's, uh, let's block in the eyes here in just a second, okay. Eyes, 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 eyes. I am going to use this uh, Q-Mesh Sphere. Uh, I wanna make sure that my uh, my gizmo is set to be completely, you know, neutral in its in its position, so it's it's flat it, in the in the UV space. Okay, oriented with the with the space, and then I can just drag this out, hold Control, and then I can, yeah, hold on, drag it out, hold Shift, um, and that'll give me my my eyes. Um, I messed it up though. Why? Oh, come on, you. There we go. I think it's supposed to be drawing it out straight. Why isn't it drawing it out straight? <laughs> okay, and bring these eyeballs. Feels like this this part of the face is definitely coming back too far, so I'm going to bring this forward some. Um, yeah, and I got to kind of play play around, see about position and placement and things like that. This is like huge, huge reason why. Um, <clears throat> split on mast points. Um, huge, huge reason why. We want to make sure that we have the eyes in as quickly as possible, so that, that way we have that ability to uh, to really be able to judge how things are going. So now with these eyes, it's not going to be just like this. Um, but it's it's going, so I'm going to have to go through and add in an extra piece to be able to make those eyelids. So let's do that. In fact, let's go ahead. I'm going to say Control Shift D here with these eyes. We'll go ahead, we'll center this, and then we'll say flatten. Ah, oh, because it has multiple subdivision levels. Get rid of the subdivision levels. Now we can go in and we can say flatten. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so now we can go ahead, let's say accept. We're just gonna stretch these out. And then we're just gonna kind of scale them up a little bit. It's really, really plain and simple. Uh, now, to be able to get the, the droopy eyes, we're going to want to take these and really just play with placement on these corners, okay? Just really quick and easy, we're able to get some decent shape out of it. Okay, and then the eyes are going to want to come up a little bit more toward the center here. Okay, so if we just bring this up, uh, we can say, Let's smooth it out a time or two. Yeah, just once, I guess. Delete that. Okay, and then we'll merge it down. And since we have our polygroups turned on for our Dynamesh, we're going to want to make sure that this is all <laughs> one group. Um, but this will be helpful in, in going through and um, can a mod swap that link? Yes. Uh, in fact, I, I went through and I had gotten rid of it. Hopefully it's not there anymore, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. 
it's uh yeah it's kind of a pain they're uh the so the reference drawing is from an artist named Mikkel. he is awesome here i got i've got him pulled up over here on the other side actually so here is his um here's his full piece i actually wonder i wonder if he has a here let me go ahead and i'll, sh I'll share the link here uh copy link so there's there's the link to the Instagram post. Um, so you can see here's here's the image that I have on my on my screen right now. Um, very fantastic piece. Um, let's I want to see actually real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if we if we can find them on ArtStation because if we can. Maybe he's got full pieces. I, I should have asked him for the full piece uh, earlier. He would have given it to me. He's he's a he's a buddy of mine. Um, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. For some reason, I was thinking that he had more pictures or like that he had another place that I could go and get the place where I could get the um, the full piece Because having having the full piece would be super helpful, but oh well, I don't worry about it. <laughs> Maybe I'll ask him for it later <laughs> at some other point. But yeah, so that's that's that full piece, and then this is actually uh, like he had gone through and redone a version of it that he had done before four years earlier. So um, yeah, it's just open. I mean, it's it's something that he's. Uh, I don't think that he has a, an end date posted, but. Um, Yeah, he doesn't have an end date attached to it, so, so yeah, yeah, I I totally say go ahead and do it. It's a great, um, it's a fun design. Really, really good. Okay, let me see. Let's go ahead and let's grab this. We'll start kind of playing with these uh <clears throat> with these lips just a little bit now the mouth is super super interesting and one of the things that we want to be aware of is the forms that happen with the mouth naturally okay in fact that's going a little bit too far in let's kind of pull it out a little bit like that okay so just by taking my move brush and turning uh turning on that accu curve you're coming up to, to brush curve accu curve it's making this sharp point on the brush you know if i have that turned off uh this is what i get you know this nice round shape so so knowing that you have that as an option it, it's uh it's super super powerful <laughs> it gives you a lot of options Go, kind of pull that out a little bit. Uh, no, so this is this is not for a studio. This is just for fun. Um, yeah, this is just so Fridays uh, stream days are kind of my my break time. This is this is where I get to you know cut loose and and uh, do something a little bit different than I typically do. Um, it's super, super helpful to me as an artist to have 
you know, personal projects, to do something, something fun, something different, uh, something not related to work, uh, just because it helps the, the creative juices keep flowing. It helps me to, to think of things from different angles. Um, I would love a Greek head made on this to draw as my ref. Hey, <laughs> Quentin, dude, it is good to see you. It is good to see you. Well, I saw you last week, too. Whoa, you're famous. I'm famous. What are you talking about, Quentin? Because <laughs> I'm on the TV. <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Okay. So far, I'm not super digging... A few things about this um, and that probably went a little bit too far back it's like one of the things that I'm trying to figure out and things that I'm trying to work through um, I'm trying to work through kind of Balancing what I feel like I see here versus and, and, and like trying to not make it feel like a Tim Burton character, which it, it feels very much like a Tim Burton character the way that I have it now. Maybe the eyes are just too droopy. Let's, let's, let's try playing with that a little bit. take it so that the outside is just a little bit picked up kind of raise these cheekbones a bit yeah it's starting to work there we go that's a little bit better Go ahead and add this. Are there sculptures you can download? Looks like Jim Burton. <laughs> Sculpting with a mouse. No, the so the clicks that you're hearing are my keyboard. It's a it's a pain. I I hate this keyboard. I, I really, really wish that they wouldn't make super clicky clacky keyboards because it's noisy. <laughs> I want quiet keyboards. I want a quiet keyboard. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to flatten this down. Except. Oh, my knee is having all sorts of problems today. grab that move infinite depth that way we can move that whole shape of the ear around now one of the things to note um, in looking at the character okay this character is um, like an Edwardian style day of the dead sort of character very beautifully done I really really like the combination I really like the way that she's looking so I want to think. I want to. I want to think about kind of what it is that she. You know what the world is like that she lives in, where it is that she comes from, you know, have her being Edwardian in the way that her her. Vetment, um. Her clothing, um, goes. Rubber rings that completely silence a mechanical click. That's interesting. I'll have to check that out. So, this is, uh, I'm working on a laptop. Uh, so, my laptop, it's like I can't replace the keyboard. <laughs> um, yeah. Masks are better for some tasks. Um, unless you're really used to the pen. No, the pen's definitely better. Uh, when you're when you're working inside a ZBrush, 
Um, the only thing that I use the pen for, or I mean, sorry, the the uh, the mouse for, is when I need to actually click, like uh, when I'm in deformation and I want to, if I want to be able to select this and say maybe like 100 or whatever, I can go ahead and I can I can change size based on whatever value I want to to put in there, but it's uh, it's not really good for anything else. So, um, so I would say, yeah, definitely, definitely using a tablet is the way to go. Um, Grab that and get make that piece for the back of the ear here. Okay, let's go ahead and we're gonna say control D, control D a couple of times. We'll just say polish. Just so that, that can be nice and uh, nice and lovely. Okay. And then let's say let's grab this and we'll say kind of cut into that just a little bit just to kind of hint at the fact that that's going to be an ear <laughs> because a piece of geometry sticking out the side of your head isn't enough uh, enough of a hint that this is going to be <laughs> an ear <laughs> <clears throat> let me see Yeah, so I don't I don't actually have a Cintiq for my personal computer. I do have one for my work computer. Um, I kind of wish I had a, a Cintiq for my for myself, but uh, that'll be I guess a different uh, different challenge for a different day, <laughs> different investment. Um, okay, I'm not liking that. There's something about this that I'm just mm, need to really tweak and play this. Okay, that's that's a little bit better. Um, but yeah, having having the Cintiq is actually really quite nice. Uh, it is it is really tricky because your hand does get in the way, and I so like for right now when I'm working on ZBrush on my on my laptop. I love working with the uh, with the Wacom tablet, just just a tablet, and then I have a second screen, so it's like I can see everything that's happening. My hand isn't in the way. It's so nice. Um, stuck with ZBrush four. That's that's years old. I mean, that's like five six years ago. <laughs> uh, I recommend updating, um, especially since ZBrush gives free upgrades. If you're working off of uh, a non-licensed version, a pirated version, uh, I recommend investing in the real version <laughs> because one, uh, it's legal to have the free ver the the real version. Um, yeah, I'm 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 not an advocate for. Um, for free until you can afford it it's it's just not a logical way to do anything um make these ears smaller um <laughs> there'll be pirates here yeah, if it's a legit license, you can update for free and you can get all the way up to ZBrush 2021 point whatever, uh, 2021.6.4 um, is what we're on right now. Um, it's definitely worth it. Um, like there is, there's no reason to not update, so.
Yeah, I got I got ZBrush at like four R four R three or something like that, and uh, yeah, I, I haven't had to pay for any upgrades, and it's it's been a tremendous thing. The way that that Pixelogic makes their money um, oh, is through new subscriptions, or you know, subscriptions, or through new purchases, new license purchases or through studio licenses. Um, that's just kind of, that's that's the way that they have chosen to model their company, and that's phenomenal for the single user. <clears throat> no answer to your question. Did you have a question that I didn't answer? Uh, yes, each time I, each time I get, um, append a new object, it, it gives it its own polygroup, so so yeah, it's really, really nice. It's a really nice, effective way to work. Right here, let's go ahead and we will, uh, let's append some hair in here. I'll take the hair, once I once I add it in, okay, so we'll just add in this, this sphere to kind of block it in. I'm just gonna come up to Subtool and we will say Split Unmasked. Okay, we'll rename this hair. Okay, and then let's start kind of uh, kind of moving it around, making it more about the size that we want. It's the wrong shape. And there will be a lot of shapes that kind of go into this to make it work right, but uh, but yeah. Yeah, honestly, uh, ZBrush has changed my life. I mean, this is this is a phenomenal piece of software, um, and I mean, I'm I'm fortunate that <laughs> I I kind of get away with uh, being able to use this and nothing else for my job right now, and that's phenomenal. Uh, there aren't a whole lot of people that get to do just ZBrush for work, you know. <laughs> um, an extremely fortunate position to be in. I am what they call it flipped normals, a zbrush cowboy. <laughs> okay, so these eyebrows are coming up a little bit too high. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab those and we're going to bring them down. And this is where, you know, as we start to add in the other elements and start to compare the pieces to each other, be able to check their relationships, those sorts of things, it makes it a lot easier for us to be able to decide um, when things look right or when they don't look right. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Let's change back to this. Something like that for now. Yeah, I love Z Modeler. I use Z Modeler all the time. One of the tricky things with Z Modeler, though, is that there's a lot of there's a lot of accidental vertex welding when you don't want it, and so it really messes up my meshes. And so it's it's been kind of a kind of a tricky thing for me. So. Um, ever since they kind of rolled out that uh that new extrude edge function uh it's been kind of a kind of a pain for me but um but i still use it probably more than anything else Let's go ahead over 
over here. Sometimes these forms don't want to smooth out quite the way that I want. It's like just do the thing, do the do the thing. Thing to do. <laughs> Scooby dooby doo. I'm gonna give that kind of a low bridge right here, kind of like this, so that it's so that it helps the uh, helps to minimize the nose in a way. Okay, that's a little bit better. Turn off transparent. Okay, I'm gonna take these cheeks and just raise them up just a little bit. Okay, that's starting to look cool. It's starting to look cool. <laughs> Why is it so nice to watch you <laughs> sculpt, Steven? <laughs> Let me see. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit behind. Let me see. Yeah, ZBrush Core is... Um, it's a it's a condensed it's a simplified version of ZBrush. It's it it has it has some of the basic like 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 a lot of the basic tools that you would want to use inside a ZBrush. So it's really good for people who want to who want to really try it out and really get into a lot of the basic things that ZBrush has. Um, <clears throat> but they can't afford to to go all the way and get the full professional version yet. Um, I think the professional license is like $800. It's a, it's a one-time thing. You get all the free upgrades, things like that. Super, super awesome. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, ZBrush Core. I haven't actually used Core. I've used Core Mini, which is the free version. Uh, that one's really hard to navigate because it only lets you have one sub-tool and just a, just a couple of little brushes to be, to use. Uh, but at the same time, it still allows you to to sculpt and get the get your feet wet really decently well, and and being able to sculpt digitally. Um, yeah, the the monthly cloud subscription model is kind of a pain in the butt. That's one of the, my biggest uh, my biggest dislikes with Adobe <laughs> is the uh, you know having to. <clears throat> having to uh you know pay my annual subscription to be able to keep the software and when i was in school we were able to buy you know the 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 cs whatever version was out at the time <clears throat> and uh and we were able to just you know keep it until we needed to upgrade you know and <laughs> and then all of a sudden the 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 creative cloud stuff started rolling out and uh yeah. Let me see. <clears throat> Sorry, let me mute for a second. Clear my throat. Let me see. Upgrade to a full ZBrush at a discount because you bought Core. That's very true. I'm going to ask whether you're going to use a sphere or extrude for the hair. So the hair, um, I will build this out in a couple of different ways. Uh, because the hair is like these massive chunks, I'll probably go through and... I don't know, I've got a couple of different ways that I'll go about it. But I'll probably use my, my own hairbrush to kind of, uh, kind of pull that stuff together. Um, I have this uh, this really cool. Uh, like a lot of a lot of people uh, have have bought this brush on ArtStation or on um, 
in fact, I need to go and make it available on the on the Flip Normals website. It's uh, this is a fantastic hairbrush, and I've I built it myself. Uh, it's got several different uh, little pieces there that you can use, um, and it's it's nice because it's got these multiple uh, multiple strands, so you can go ahead and you can kind of split it apart, you know, do something unique and fun and whatever. Uh, obviously that looks kind of weird and that's not helpful to what we're doing right now but um, but yeah super super helpful having that sort of brush to go into this <clears throat> um, the uh, but yeah so that's that's probably how I'll tackle the the hair <clears throat> um, Right now, let's see if we can get this uh, forehead to, to work in a more appealing sort of way. Um, <clears throat> ah, I apologize. Hold on. Uh, it's going to ask whether you are going to use a sphere or extrude from... Okay, yeah, I got that. Uh, Piche Web. I want to purchase new learning courses, but most I see aren't from 2021 ZBrush. Any recommendations? I've been going through some of Udemy on, uh, but they're all years old. Yeah, I've got. I've actually have a bunch of courses. Um, things that I have. <clears throat> quiet you. Okay. Uh, things that I've made available. Um, you know. So for instance, I have. Things like I've got this stylized character modeling course uh, that I just published at the beginning of the year, so it's it's up to date. It's super new. Um, let me see. So that's a really good one. That goes through the process of showing how to how to sculpt a character from from a concept, starting from a sphere, but then going through and ending up with something that is production ready. So with the clean topology, with the UVs, um, using poly paint to be able to create textures. Uh, things like that. It's it's really really powerful. It's a it's a great it's a great course. Super full, um, all inclusive course from beginning to end. Um, and then it also goes through and talks about how to uh, how to create a, a posed maquette, or also how to go ahead and prep it for three D printing. So, uh, let's see if I can grab this. Wrong drawer one. Wrong drawer. Wrong. Yeah, so let's see. Let's turn off the internet there. Okay. So, got like... Oh, hi, guys. <laughs> uh, so, like, I've got like these uh, these pieces right here. These are these are parts of of the uh, the entire mermaid from that course that I went through, and uh, and she's been she's been engineered for printing. She has you know all these little fancy holes to be able to make sure that I can. Uh, I think I just, I, there's a little bit of a break in that piece. Um, but yeah, lots, lots of little things. Very, very complete sort of course. Um, really, really good. Um, there's also, <laughs> getting a lot of little dings there. It's kind of fun. Um, let me mute so I don't have to worry about the, the beeps bothering you guys. Um, I also have a whole bunch of other things in here, uh, different time lapses and tutorials. Um, I've got this uh, hard surface modeling techniques inside of ZBrush. This is a really fantastic little course to be able to, to go ahead and show you different hard modeling, uh, hard surface modeling techniques um, using uh, my series called the Fauna Bots. You know, the Fauna Bots are these animal robots. I've got a, it's kind of, it kind of started with this, uh, I guess we'll go ahead, I'll show you the, Dale. All right. Okay. So um, it started with this guy right here. Uh, this is a, a piece that I did as part of a beta testing for ZBrush. And it, I mean, I loved how it ended up. So I went ahead and I continued that, uh, that exploration and uh, ended up coming up with the, uh, with the hog bot and decided to make a course on the full production of it. So um, it's really kind of a fun thing. 
Uh, it comes in English and in Spanish. <laughs> so it's really fun. Um, yeah, and then, and then stylized character modeling. Um, all sorts of things. This one, this one's different from the other ones in that this is uh, real time, so it's not sped up at all. Um, but it includes the full process, so super good. It's it's exactly like the class that I teach at Nomen, so really really nice. Oh, that was a lot diving into kind of that. So yeah, uh, those are those are kind of my my personal courses, my personal things that I have available. They're all very up to date, and there are also Discord channels to be able to dive into as well. Um, so, so yeah, uh, really fun. Let me see. What do I render in? Primarily ZBrush or Arnold for Maya. So that's what I use. <coughs> um, let me see. Definitely life-changing software. Absolutely, I'm trying to catch up with the with the chat. There's a whole bunch of stuff that like, <laughs> um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that popped up as I was trying to answer questions, and so I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to, kind of catch up a little bit. Um, new to 3D modeling, and I want to get more into environment than character. That's cool. That's cool. I do a lot of environment stuff too. Uh, do you recommend the full brush version to give detail to my models or will the mini or core do the so zbrush core mini is not very good for <clears throat> for big elaborate pieces it's more for um going through and kind of experimenting with um with sculpting kind of getting your feet wet it, it is free so it's it's kind of worth trying out if you're uh if you're really skeptical, um, <clears throat> but ZBrush, the full version of ZBrush gives you all that power to be able to go ahead and use, you know, to create multiple pieces, um, <laughs> to you to have like really really dense meshes and and have a ton of different brushes and all sorts of little things. There, there's so much flexibility that the full version of ZBrush gives you. So, um, so yeah. Tried sculpting in Blender? No, I haven't. Um, I've tried getting into Blender again, and I, I just, I just can't. I haven't had the time. <laughs> I need to. <laughs> uh, just finished college studying games development, and I really enjoy sculpting. I love sculpting. Do you use Maya? Yes, absolutely, all the time. Um, just enjoy enjoying seeing you at work. I was wondering, do you also retopologize when a character is done? Sometimes. It depends on what I want the character for. So, like, for instance, this particular character, I may not retopologize her. Um, it depends on kind of what it is that I feel like I decide I want her for. Um, Let me see best software for clothing I use ZBrush a lot of people use marvelous designer um, but yeah let me see uh, enjoy seeing your work wondering read to apologize character or do you just focus on sculpting yeah so yeah just focusing on sculpting um, man I'm almost caught up guys I'm almost caught up don't say anything until I'm done no just kidding <laughs> I had a choice of whether I wanted to buy a new Xbox PS5 or ZBrush Pro I chose ZBrush <laughs> of course definitely get way more enjoyable time from ZBrush Pro than a video game absolutely I, I think I saw Quentin too was asking uh, how many times or, or like how many hours of the day I spend in ZBrush probably over 10 <laughs> I spend a ton of time um, inside a ZBrush is this real time or sped up um, is what real time so um, I'm currently sculpting real time if that's uh, if that's your question um 
my course on like the mermaid um and and currently actually here's something here's something that i'll i'll share with you guys right now um so i mean they did they were having a sale here but just so that you're aware uh on flipped normals uh let's uh log in well, in fact i might be able to just find it here uh let's go ahead search project products let's say smartest you can see i've got the uh i've got my course up here as well <laughs> I should have thought to, to mention this before. Let's see, let's go ahead and paste that in there. Um, the course is 31% off. I, ch I chose 31 because there are 31 days in May. Um, anyway, so if, if you wanted to be able to go ahead and get into this, uh, this is an option, okay? This is this is fantastic. I've made you know, a huge thank you to anyone who's bought the course um, so far. And this is, this, it's, it's been, it's, it's sold really pretty well. Um, and it's been really fun. Um, so yeah, it's 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 fun. I I I, I enjoy this stuff. Um, but yeah, so so that's there as well. In case you're interested in checking that out, um, flip normals. That was that was a super cool thing. They actually invited me. Um, they invited me to participate in the in the store. It's it's something that's very cultivated and and uh, yeah, they 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 pick and choose who they want to have sell on their, on their site. And so that's, it was a, it was an honor for them to come in and, uh, you know, ask me to be part of this. So it's fun. Um, let me see. Steven's a great teacher as well. I definitely recommend his course. Thanks, Quentin. Dude, you're, you're the man. <laughs> do you use substance painter? I do. Uh, but substance painter is really kind of tricky to use while I'm streaming. Uh, my computer doesn't like doing that. It's like it, it just, it's just too graphics card intensive uh, when it when I'm doing both at the same time. Same thing with rendering. Like I've tried I've tried using Substance while I'm streaming. I've tried using rendering while I'm uh, while I'm streaming with Arnold, and uh, my computer just rolls over. <laughs> it's like it's like sorry, dude. <laughs> it's like I'm not doing it today. Um, have a hard time defining lips and nose and modeling any tips for that yeah uh you can use separate pieces um how do you import a picture um let's let's go ahead i'll show you that real quick because i, I kind of want to go ahead and add in a second picture but i want to let's save this spotlight so i can come back to it let's say mikhail dtiys uh spotlight a Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Let's let's grab our image from over here because he's got the nice full picture. So I'm just going to say print screen. It's not a very big picture, but it'll be enough for what we need. I hope. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and save it, and then I'll I'll t I'll transfer it over into my. If I can find it. Do -de -de -do -de -de -do. I need to go through and like clean out my downloads folder. <laughs> Just barely saved it. Where? <laughs> How is it not showing up? Oh shoot! There it is. It's like it, I guess it just took a second to refresh. Mikhail DTIYS. Let's add that in there. Okay, so this is how you go through and you add things into your uh, into your spotlight. So what what you want to do is you want to come up to texture. Right now I'm using the mouse, by the way, for for whoever it was that was asking about using the mouse or using the using the tablet. Yeah, right now I'm using the mouse. So uh, texture, go import. And you go ahead and you select the image that you want. And then once you select it here, you say add to spotlight. You see, there we go, we have it added. Uh, we can go ahead and we can select the paint and then control alt click and drag in that white space to kind of get rid of 
that stuff there. Get rid of that stuff there. Right, come get rid of all that. Get rid of all that. Okay, so now I've got this nice little image here. It kind of helps supplement that. So I can just kind of click and drag, pull this around, put it where I want it. Something like that could work pretty well. Okay. So then if I wanted to, I could go ahead and turn this back on. I can rearrange, I can I can put things in different orders. However, however I feel like kind of uh, organizing this. It's a really nice way to work. Block out sometimes and Nomad, yeah, I love. I love Nomad, but I I, uh, I I haven't been able to really get into it. Um, yeah. So, anyways, for the for the point on the nose and the lips, I like using uh, different pieces sometimes. So, like for instance, the eyelids I have as a different piece. I have the nose as a different piece, and and you can go through and you can do this with as many different pieces as you need to be able to define that shape. Uh, for the lips really like super simple I, I just kind of went in with uh, with Damien standard and I just whoop, you know and then I can use like the clay brush oh sorry use the clay brush and kind of kind of pull that out a little bit okay so that's creating like one lip and then you can go down you can do the same thing you can just kind of pull that you know with the Damien standard uh, use that clay brush again and just kind of build that out you can use Damien standard to kind of sculpt that back and in a little bit and then if you use your move brush with the accu curve turned on you can just kind of take the the corner of the mouth and just kind of pull it in a little bit and that just and that's that's how i went ahead and kind of did this uh little bit here um just super simple okay it's uh not not too it's not it's not a very advanced uh technique just kind of using simple tools to be able to achieve a complex shape. Um, let's get rid of this extra pair of lips because because you know if you have lips on your cheek and you do a kiss on the cheek or if you do like the uh, the bisou or uh, besitos, you know, you know, a kiss on the cheek is going to be a kiss on the mouth, so it's like really weird. <laughs> so many ads. Yeah, for a film production, do you use ZBrush all the way, or do you still use Maya? So, it, for film production stuff, I do use Maya quite a bit, um, but. You know anything that I can do inside of ZBrush, I will. Um, so, for instance, I'll do most of my topology, or at least start my topology inside of um, inside of ZBrush, and then um, once I get it to yeah, maybe about eighty percent of the way there, I'll go ahead and take it over into Maya and use Quad Draw. Um, Let's go ahead and kind of play with this jaw shape down here. It's a little bit too, uh, a little bit too masculine. I want it to be a little bit more feminine. So let's go ahead and let's let's actually just use the trim dynamic, and we'll just kind of sculpt that back and in a little bit more. That's a little bit better. A little bit more down here, I think. Yeah. It's really kind of kind of tricky to get the right shape sometimes though F uh, female faces uh, can be really really tricky especially ones that are super stylized and things like that so yeah uh, really kind of interesting let's go ahead I'm going to say let's uh, let's start blocking in kind of the uh, the upper torso a little bit just to get a little bit more context oops There we go. Now with this shape, I can just come in here with the taper and I'm going to taper out the bottom. I'm going to taper in the top. 
Let's accept that. And let's just kind of use that and just just pull it down some. Oh, let's make sure that symmetry is turned on. <laughs> okay, some of this is definitely going to need some some work, but it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah, at some point, what what's going to happen? Oh, I stop that. Let's say split unmasked, and we'll just kind of take this and turn this into torso. Um, kind of smooth that out. Dynamesh it, so that we can just work on it as a as a piece rather than as part of the uh, upper body there, upper head piece there. Mm -hmm. Kind of fun. <laughs> Three lip Betty. <laughs> Yeah, the Wacom tablets are great. I love using the the Wacom tablets. Um, iPads having the same processor as the MacBooks now. Praying to get the native ZBrush to make it compatible on the iPad as well. That'd be cool. That'd be super cool. <laughs> Is there a website specifically for 3D artists to upload their work and make commissions? Um, I've only used Behance so far. Any others? A lot of people will use ArtStation. There are a ton of people that will be on ArtStation, and and actually, I get I get um, requests all the time. I don't I don't really take commissions. Um, honestly, like <laughs> I don't have time for commissions. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and let's grab our uh, smooth stronger brush. Um, In fact, it was funny. There was this one time I had somebody can um, somebody ask me for uh, for a commission. Wanted to pay me fifty dollars, and it's like I get fifty dollars an hour minimum. Um, <laughs> it's like why would I why would I take a full character commission for fifty dollars? It just doesn't make any sense. Um, I usually charge, you know, for a for a character, uh, I usually charge somewhere in the neighborhood of two thousand to four thousand dollars, and so for somebody to go through and want me to do it for peanuts, I, I, yeah, was, that was just like, yeah, don't yeah, know your worth, <laughs> don't let anybody else, uh, don't let anybody try to dictate your worth to you, and then they're they were all upset when I when I said no and they're like you got to learn to work with other people's budgets and I was like that's not how this works my friend that's not how it works don't try to don't try to guilt me into doing you know insanely cheap labor you know, it's 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 one of those things where it's like um Fiverr, if you're familiar with Fiverr, Fiverr has ruined freelance for everyone. Uh, there are people in the world where maybe cost of living is insanely cheaper than it is here in the States. Um, and granted, quality of living might not be as great either. But... Um, But you know, paying someone fifty dollars to do a job uh, <laughs> yeah I, I don't know I, I I could just ramble on that way too much, but it's 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 frustrating to me. It is frustrating. <laughs> I just think that some people have way too much. <sighs> just too much, just too much. <laughs> uh. 
I don't even know what to say to that anymore. <laughs> I'm just like, you guys, really? For 50 bucks, you could learn how to do it yourself. And then, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's funny. It's funny. That's all I'm going to say. It's funny. Um... We can't pay you, but we can get the exposure. <laughs> yeah, because my mortgage is currency is exposure and experience. Yeah, I wish I had a mortgage. <laughs> no, I wish I wish I owned a home. That's 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 the uh, that's the honest truth right there. Exercises to recommend to be uh, beginner stages to get better. Um, things like this, you know, going through and just doing, you know, find a, find a concept that you like. If you, you know, one of the nice things about right now trends on social media is that we get things like the, uh, um, we get things like these, uh, these draw this in your style challenges and, uh, oops, that's not what I wanted. And uh, it's 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 really really nice for you know for us to be able to to go ahead and uh, you know take that that piece and do our own take on it and it's just a just a little bit of a practice thing, um, but it's uh, but it's well worth it. It's a it's a great investment on time and. Um, you know, just doing quick exercises can help you to, to learn different skills. Now, quick exercises won't necessarily help you with everything. Um, but there are a lot of things that you can definitely learn with quick exercises. Um, okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to... Let's say stroke. I'm going to say curve. Let's take the curve step up uh, down to like 0.5. This way I can get more divisions while I, while I drag it out. Even if I have the brush bigger. Huh. I wonder what's happening there. It looks like it kind of doubled back on itself. Alright, something kind of like that. Okay, so now I can come in here and we're just going to say... Okay, oops, 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 oops. Okay, do something like this. And then we can go ahead and we can say inflate. Okay, and then we'll just take this piece and we'll just kind of pull it into the head so that it feels like it's hair coming from roots, you know? <laughs> just little tricks, little things that you can do. Right now, I mean, there's there's easily like a ton of work to, left, to, left to do on this, but it's, uh, in fact, let's, let's go ahead and actually take this so that it's down here more, have it coming out from behind the ear instead of in front of, I think that that gives me a little bit more of the shape that I'm seeing right here. Uh, there are a lot of li different little questions that uh, you need to learn to ask yourself while you're sculpting. Is like, what is it that I'm seeing? Uh, what could be making that? Um, yeah, lots, lots of, lots of things. Um, Somebody was asking earlier, is like ten hours a day, doesn't that make your wrist hurt? <laughs> it's like, uh, not really. I mean I, I try to be very careful about my uh my positioning. And if if I um if I'm not careful, like oh so like for instance I I my my wrists don't have a ton of flexibility. Um I I can't do a regular push up, so if I do push ups I do it on my knuckles. Um but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's 
going to take that. We're going to grab this. Okay. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to say in flight. Just like we did with the other piece there. The only difference being that, you know, this one's got... <laughs> You gotta go ahead and add in some extra pieces in here. Some extra edge loops just so we can, can kind of control that curve a little bit better. That's a little bit nicer. Okay. And then we'll have to add some more later. I, I kinda wanna go through, see what else we can figure out with this dame. Kind of taper in this face a little bit better. I feel like, well, I mean, according to the to the concept, the lips are a lot smaller. So I'm just gonna kind of go in here and kind of shrink those up a little bit. Uh, and let's bring this chin up a little bit as well. Kind of tricky sometimes to, to balance out these different shapes. Yeah, let's go ahead and lower that intensity. Okay, let me see. <laughs> Burpees do. <too. laughs> how you get to. Yeah, how do I get to of what? <laughs> uh, do you think when learning 3D sculpting it's easier to do tons of tutorials modeling different objects or is it better to learn with theory and paid courses uh, it can be good with the balance of both uh, what's nice is that there are a bunch of free resources that you can look into like for instance um, people like myself um, oh two curves um, not well, I mean, it's it's just a matter of going through with the uh, with the piece and saying, you know, you drag it out once. Oh, that's that's with symmetry. So turn off symmetry. Drag it out once. You tap. You drag it out again. Tap. Drag it out again. And you, so you can you can do this as many times as you need to. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of what you do. I think that's. Um, yeah. <laughs> Missing us at Disney. Yeah. Who am I talking to? S S S W. Who am I talking to? Yeah, I, I I absolutely miss Disney. It's super fun there. Um, yeah, having a having a blast with Netflix. But yeah, definitely missing you guys. That's S S S W. I'm trying to think who S S S W would be. Uh, Scott's the first person that comes to mind. Who I, I can't think of anybody else that has an S for the in their in their name off the top of my head. My mind's going a blank. You need to tell me who you are. <laughs> Let me see. Um, but yeah, one of the uh, actually one of the, one of the uh, one of the activities that um that i did a lot when i was first starting was um i would pick an object and i would model it uh, so for instance i did a i did a zipper pull one time when i was in college in high school i did a little matchbox car but it was like a really organic one it had like it was like a like a panther car super cyan sam west <laughs> Or Sam. I do know a Sam. Uh, Mila Churn. Hello from... Is that is that Humber College? Or is it Humber College? <laughs> Welcome to the stream. It's fun. It's fun having people around. It's, 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 sorry. I get, I get, I get caught up quite a bit on, uh, on talking. I enjoy being around people and, um, actually learned this uh a couple of a couple of days ago 
that the um, that the Noman campus will be opening up for uh, for in person classes. Um, take this and kind of pull it back into the head a little bit. Lots to kind of play with. Yeah, so one argument for, uh, for Blender is that it's completely free. Uh, but the argument for uh, for ZBrush is that it's industry standard. So that's kind of hard to argue with. <laughs> um, that's, that's the big reason why I started learning ZBrush is that I saw that uh, all the industry jobs that I wanted when I was, uh, when I was getting ready to graduate college, um, they all required ZBrush. And so I was like, I got to jump on this. And I had a buddy of mine um, who I believe was also getting ready to graduate at the time, who uh, he had used ZBrush and 3D printing for his uh, BFA show um, at BYU. And so I was like, I have got to try this out. And so he went through and he uh, took an afternoon and showed me all the things and and uh, and how cool it was and... And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm getting into this. And so, like, right around the same time that I started getting into it, somebody else, um, uh, somebody else was getting into it as well. And so, uh, and then, and then slowly, everybody else started kind of getting into it. So, like, right as I was getting re getting uh, ready to leave BYU and graduate school, um, everybody started kind of diving into this new software that, well, new new to us, <laughs> that. Uh, it was just it was just amazing oh here we gotta go ahead and split this off split unmasked merge down okay i think i might go ahead and block in uh block in the hat how do you feel about sculptors pro i love it but it's got its place it's one of those things that uh um uh, it's one of those things that is super helpful when you're designing, but it can tear things apart if you're not careful. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what, I'm trying to decide, but I think it could be cool I'm going to, let's turn off dynamic. I'm going to take this hair and just kind of wisp it off to the side. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Let's kind of keep some of this over here. Now there'll be a lot of cleanup to do, but I'm liking the idea of having that kind of wisped up like that. I think that's, that's kind of cool. Um, and I think what I'm seeing Something that I want to be a little bit more aware of is something that I'm that I'm seeing here is that I feel like there might be like a front piece here that I'm seeing and then there's like a back piece. So I'm curious. Let's grab this. We'll kind of pull this forward. We'll pull it up and over. And then we'll take these guys, go ahead and make it its own poly group. And we'll just kind of move it back a little bit so that it's, um, so it's matching up with this back piece a little bit more. Okay, we'll clean up the, the way that it all 
terminates in the end uh, at some point. But for right now, we're kind of playing with these shapes. Let me see, I got about 20 minutes. Let me see. Love Death and Robot season two. I haven't I haven't actually seen it at all. Um, yeah. You still haven't answered my question, though. <laughs> SSSW. I got to know your name, man. I got to know your name. It's like I'm kind of dying over here trying to figure out, like, like who do I know by the name, you know, who has, like, you know, a name that starts with an S, and it's like I, I've got Sam, I've got Scott, I've got... Who else do I have? Stacy? <laughs> but I'm sure you're not Stacy. <laughs> oh, shoot. Peter, how you doing? Here, let's do this. I'm going to actually come in here and say polygroups, autogroups, just that way I don't have to worry about messing up anything. As badly. <laughs> okay, let's go through. I'm just going to kind of, that's a little bit too much. Like I've got the smooth stronger selected, so it's going to be a little bit stronger. <laughs> it's Mickey Mouse. <laughs> it might be a troll, Steven. Yeah, it might be. What 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 do you, what makes you think it's a troll? Do you think it's a troll because uh because they said love death and robots or because they said Disney? <laughs> Either way, I mean they're not being bothersome. Except the fact that it's distracting knowing that I don't know who it is. <laughs> if I call you, I'm calling you out. Um, you see, you get accustomed to the thousands of shortcuts and clicks in ZBrush to love it. I feel like it's so annoying to learn them all. So the nice thing about ZBrush is that there's, it's, it's really all pretty basic. Um, there's, there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts, but it's, it's all very, um, I don't know. It's it's really pretty easy to uh, to navigate because it's it's very um, it makes sense, you know. So you hit B to be able to get the the keyboard shortcut for you know to be able to get to all your all your brushes, um, and then you just think about the name of the brush that you want to be able to use. And so you know, if I wanted to be able to use the move brush, I just hit M to be able to narrow it down. And and you know, it, it takes a while to be able to learn the ones that you want to be able to actually use. Like for instance, there are a ton of these brushes that I've never even touched, like the mesh project or the mesh insert dot or these uh, uh, extrude <laughs> prop depth uh, mesh extrude the mesh balloon. I haven't used those ones at all yet. And I can't think of a use for them yet, so I don't know. It's it's one of those things that's kind of uh, kind of interesting. You you figure out the things that you like to use. Um, 
it's going down too far. Um, and then you kind of just let go of the rest. Oh, not that one. Uh, not that one. This one. <laughs> it's like wrong keyboard shortcut. That's a keyboard shortcut I made myself. It's like good grief. Okay, so let's see. Let's grab this. I'm going to kind of twist it. Let's pull on it. Twist it. Oops. Yeah, I love ZBrush. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go down and get breakfast after this <laughs> before I start working on uh, my Netflix stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. I'm not sure that I'm liking exactly how this is turning out. So I'll probably have to come back to that and figure something else out. Uh, let's let's block in that hat. Because the hat will block in a lot of this area, and so I can just kind of like loosely terminate my hair underneath that hat <laughs> and not worry about it too much. In fact, here, let's go ahead and we'll duplicate this up, select this. Okay, so now we've got that hat. I'm curious. I'm curious about what the shape is underneath that hat because she's got a ton of these different flowers and things kind of going on in there, uh, which looks really cool. It's just really kind of kind of tricky to figure out what's going on there. So let's go ahead and we'll make something up. I am going to say split unmasked. Bring this all the way down to the bottom. We'll call this hat. Yeah, the first the first letter of each brush is usually the you know, it has something to do with the keyboard shortcut. So it's super, super nice, super easy to be able to narrow things down. Um <laughs> it worked too slow. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. It's not too bad. Um Yeah, two screens are definitely helpful when when sculpting. Like especially like right now in a, in an opportunity where I'm teaching or streaming. Um where it's like I can have the chat or I can have reference or I can have different things like that on, on one screen. And on the other screen, well, I guess what you guys are seeing is over there. <laughs> For that other screen, I can have what I'm working on. And it, it keeps things clean and organized and it's just really nice um, in that sort of way. I'm gonna kind of scale that out a little bit. Put this into place. And then for the hat itself, let's let's actually go in, let's say, or like the brim part of it. I'm gonna take this. Oops, not that low, not that low, not that low. Okay, something like that. Okay, we'll say geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And then we'll say control W just to be able to Mask that out. We'll flatten this part of the brim here. And we'll make it nice and big. And I want to come down here down to the display properties and I'll say double. Okay, this is obviously going to be a, a project that'll take a significant amount of time more than just uh, <laughs> than just today. But You know, kind of fun, just the same. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll start working on kind of bending this a little bit. Grab this and kind of pull this down, grab this, pull this up. That's, that's getting a little bit too much. 
bend to it. It's not getting enough of that streamlined sort of sort of look from the uh, that we're getting from the hat and from the front. So I guess the fun thing though is that these uh, Edwardian hats very they're very very <laughs> very pushed <laughs> I think it might be worthwhile taking this brim back some Let's try something like this. Give it a very different sort of shape here. Something like something like this maybe. So that's the hard thing is that like you're trying to trying to push and pull things in a very different sort of way. It doesn't quite always work. We'll leave it there for now. Okay. Very Kentucky Derby, <laughs> kind of in a way, huh? Um, yeah, clay buildup would be B, C, B, yeah. Uh, oh, thanks, Tufan. Thank you very much. Um, what about 4K versus 1080 monitors for sculpting? What's the difference? I don't find it absolutely necessary to have a 4K anything. Um, it's kind of nice to have 4K if you're painting or getting something that's super detailed. Uh, 1080p is what I work in. It's 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 been just fine. Um, but really, like for a monitor the size of mine, it's 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 not anything huge. It's it's a 21 inch monitor maybe um it's it's not huge it's not very big um and so you know like if it were to be 4k it just it's not 4k i wouldn't really use 4k the thing that 4k would allow me to do though um with a monitor this size is it would allow me to maximize my workspace and so all my buttons i could make my buttons smaller and things like that and really kind of maximize that ui a little bit better um You know what? I don't like. I don't like the uh, extra little pieces in there. I'm just going to kind of start over from these right here. Then I think I think I'll go ahead and I'll just kind of sculpt what it is that I I have to be able to make the hair. Maybe. Uh, let's say delete hidden. Um, and let's say, let's get rid of the subdivisions, or let's, let's give it some subdivisions, I guess. Hmm. Oh, it's because it's masked. I was like, why isn't it letting me <laughs> subdivide smoothly? <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. I, I've got it. I, we're, we're good. We're all right. <laughs> What tool for the brushes? Uh, the tool that I used for, for this hair, if this is the hair that you're talking about, this is my own, uh, this is my own hairbrush that I made. Uh, if you wanna be able to find it, uh, you can find it here on, um, on my marketplace. Yeah, you, know, you can find it. Uh, you know, so I got different hairbrushes. I got the standard hairbrush that I've had. Tons of people have loved it. Um, I've got hair curls, I've got a hair braid, I've got like a wavy hair with a little trick and things like that. It's really fun. Um, and then I've got this, uh, this newer brush that's kind of similar to, uh, my standard hair brush, but instead of having points, it has kind of like a, like a, I call it the hair chunks. Uh, it's, it's just kind of these, uh, let me show you, it's got like these, uh, these flattened edges ends uh down here so it's a little bit a little bit of a different feel but it's really really pretty neat um but yeah it's kind of a neat uh neat series of brushes there so that's that's what i was using 
Um, let's go ahead and turn that off. I am going to say, let's turn this back up. Um, let's grab this and we'll fill this in a bit back here. Say poly groups, auto groups, auto groups. It's still not really super apparent what the different groups are, but you know, whatever, I'll be fine. So that's that's getting a little bit cooler of a shape. Um, it's certainly starting to feel a little bit more Edwardian, uh, but I, I definitely want to go through and make sure that it feels a bit more like the uh, like the piece. So um, resolution 128 it should be fine. Yeah, nice. Hey, gorgeous. <laughs> Looks like like a hair. Yeah, that's actually kind of the uh, the the entire point of uh, yeah. It's like I wanted to be able to control um, certain certain looks, create different different shapes and things like that. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to come out. Um, so you know, in in going through and creating my own. Uh, hairbrush I've been able to really push those ideas with myself so it's 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 really nice um, you know what let's insert a mesh here kind of pull this together and then I want to make this oops Kind of flow into that, but I want it to to feel like it's kind of coming off the front too. I gotta I gotta when when you're going through and kind of working from a concept, uh, sometimes you have to make sense of what's there. Um, this is an instance where I have to kind of make sense of what's there. Um, let's go through and kind of pull that together, pull this together, and then soften it out. Yeah, this will help to get a little bit of like this shape that I feel like I'm getting through here, the general shape. Um, I'm going to say, let's come through with the mask lasso, say control W just to be able to make that its own poly group. So then when we go ahead and we Dynamesh, it'll separate that into its own separate little piece. Um, just so I don't have to worry about going in and <laughs> doing something too totally crazy. Um, let's go ahead and do something like this. We'll inflate this just a little bit. Get that going on in there. Smooth this out a little bit. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll come in with like the clay brush and just start kind of sculpting that out a little bit.
All right. And then just using different little brushes here, we can go through and start to really sculpt out these ideas that we have for the hair. By little we're starting to get a little bit more of a, a little bit more of of the uh, the look that we're looking for but sometimes you got to go through and really kind of play with this oops because there there will be a lot of uh, changes in uh, We're gonna to have to make some changes here. This is this is feeling a little bit too far forward, and then right here it feels like it's it's, it's it feels like more it's it's like kind of coming here and going up. I need to turn off that hat. The hat's kind of throwing me off a little bit here. <coughs> uh, a good reference, I guess, that I could look into for next time I start working on her is the Gibson girl. Uh, the Gibson girl is um, an old advertisement <laughs> campaign mascot I'll say uh, I mean she's a woman but she's um, she's the the face for this company called Gibson uh, Gibson something or other I can't remember um, but yeah she's like insanely famous Let's go through, we'll use the standard brush. Yeah, I'm I'm struggling with this hair, guys. Oh my goodness. I I don't think I've struggled with hair like this in a long, long time. I've never done hair like this before, so it's a little bit different of a situation. Let's go ahead and kind of clip that down a little bit. Clip that down a little bit. that down some and right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to define and find the silhouette um, there's a lot going into this that yeah it'd just be helpful to kind of understand the silhouette that I feel like I want to see in this character but yeah I'll have to go through and, and really play with that next time I next time I jump on um, <laughs> are there any good animal anatomy tutorials and courses um <laughs> don't leave us <laughs> um that's a good question i mean i know that a couple of my friends do a lot of creature sculpting uh, like Anna Carolina on she's also one of the uh, one of the streamers here 
I'm going to consolidate a couple of these shapes. Let's say Control W, Control W, just dynamesh those together so that we have two shapes instead of. Why is that? <laughs> Somehow I hit the uh, D key. Um, yeah, let's just keep it simpler while we figure out the actual forms and shapes. Um, but yeah, Ana Carolina does a lot of animal sculpting, uh, a lot of creatures, a lot of animals. So she's a really good one to follow. Um, Elliot Goldfinger. Okay, that's a cool. That's that sounds cool. You know. Goldfinger. Um, let's go through do something like this. Do something like this. All right. Try to I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Something like this maybe. So one of the things I'm trying to ask myself is well i mean I'm, I'm trying to keep in mind what's happening with the with the shape of the hair uh, but i'm also trying to ask myself uh what's the flow of what's the flow of the hair so so where is it coming from where is it going to okay so we're getting this sort of idea of like coming from the roots and then flowing outward um and so i'm trying to i'm trying to go through and, and make sure that i'm Kind of going through and really thinking about that as I as I plot things together, as I pull things in, and um, especially since I'm not one hundred percent sure everything that I'm kind of seeing in here, which is fine. Do something like this. Just kind of split it into maybe three pieces. Because I think this could be helpful. Because I do feel like this front piece is one piece, and then there's like another back piece here, and then there's another big back piece here. So having those split into three might be helpful. I don't know. We'll play with it. We'll play with it and figure out what it is that we uh there we go control w <laughs> that got spunky there we go that's better Yeah, let's go ahead and just kind of fill that in a little bit so that it's more complete. It's funny because like sometimes I'll start off a design and I'll be I'll, I'll I'll kind of go at it, you know, understanding that you know the shapes are a little bit complicated and I'm not sure exactly what I'll do, but I I I always underestimate the design. I always underestimate how uh, how tricky it'll be to uh, to create. So. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's funny. Anyway, I think I'm going to leave her here for now. Uh, she's got a ton. In fact, I haven't saved this whole time. My goodness, Quentin, you're 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 slacking. You are not helping me remember. No, just kidding. <laughs> it's not even your. It's not even your responsibility. Um. Whatever. Whatever. Um. Yeah, this one, this one will probably go over a few. Uh, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Okay, now it's working. Let me see. Hold on. 
Um, if you're talking about HD geometry, um, I don't do that. I don't have a reason to do that. Um, I've never used it. But there was a, a presentation at the ZBrush Summit a couple years back uh, by Chris Costa. Uh, he talks about using HD geometry. So if that's something you're interested in, I recommend going and checking that out. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it seems like the internet's being kind of spotty right now and I got to get to work. So I'm going to go ahead and call it for now. Um, thanks for, thanks for coming and hanging out with me for, uh, for the stream. Um, I always enjoy being able to, <laughs> being able to play and have fun and having good people around to be able to chat with while I'm doing it is a great time. So you know, thanks for coming and hope you guys have a wonderful Friday. Smartest out.